All right, so today I want to show you how to convert a refrigerator into a snake egg incubator. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of running out of space to incubate my ball python eggs. As a matter of fact, I have a reticulated python. If she actually lays eggs this year, I'm thinking she will, I'm probably going to need some more incubator space. So I actually picked up a refrigerator that is non-functional. I actually got it for free. I put it in my basement down here. And I want to show you kind of the steps that I go through from getting an older refrigerator and kind of reconditioning it into pretty much a conversion into a snake egg incubator. And it's a lot easier than you would think it is. It is pretty easy to actually do the conversion. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. All right, so here is my refrigerator that I'm going to convert to an incubator. Essentially what I did is I just tucked it in the basement here in a storage room. And if you actually get one, a lot of times they'll have like a top and a bottom. You can actually have two separate areas for two different temperatures. For example, in this one, it's really cold down here. I could actually do like gecko eggs up in the top, set it to like 75 degrees. And then in the bottom, I could actually do like ball python or, you know, articulated python eggs in the bottom and set that to like 90 degrees so you can actually have two separate areas two different temperatures which would be really cool and you really if you, if you have a 75 degree top area you definitely want your room a lot cooler than 75 so if you had like an 80 degree room it probably wouldn't work for something like that you'd probably want to and down here in the basement it's in, in the mountains of Colorado it's always cool down here in the basement so essentially if you actually get one of these the way you want to start is I've seen a lot of people what they'll do is they'll unplug the plug and take out all the compressor and everything Thing. you don't need to do that at all essentially what you do is you don't even plug it in you don't use the plug or the lights or anything on something like this and you pretty much wire it completely from scratch and I can show you a real easy way to do that and then before you actually wire it the first thing you want to do is you want to take everything out and clean it super super good as a matter of fact if you got a brand new fridge that had a bad compressor and you could pick it up for next to nothing that would be ideal I Actually have another one I'm going to show you that's what I did but on this one it's a little bit older you can see this is pretty much right from you know taken out of use and there's a little bit of stuff all over the freezer and all over the fridge so the first thing you want to do is completely gut it and scrub it down and then it's pretty much up to you if you want to use the shelves or if you want to take all the shelving out and then just stack the egg boxes in here which is probably the easiest way to actually just stack the egg boxes and remove all the shelves then you don't have to worry about getting boxes that fit the certain shelves and my other incubator actually has a glass front door on the front and the problem is is I found that it, with a glass door it, you don't quite have the insulation of a door like this and, and the, the problem with the glass door is it's really cool looking you can look inside but the problem is is the front of the incubator after it's converted is is a little bit different temperature than the back and there's always like this differential between the front and the back so I'm thinking you know I might actually go more towards this kind of a design for my main incubator and use a completely enclosed fridge without the glass front all right, so up until now, I've actually been using this as my main incubator. And the funny thing is, is this, I actually got this, it was brand new, someone bought it, and the compressor was bad as soon as they took it out of the box. And I picked it up on Craigslist for, I think it was like 200 bucks, but it was normally like a $1,200 unit. This is actually a beverage cooler, super nice. I've used it for the last two years for an egg incubator for my ball pythons, and it works fantastic. And on this one, you can kind of see more of what I actually have as far as how I built the incubator. So the first thing you want to do, whether you're doing a refrigerator or something like this, is you want to measure from the top to the bottom, and then you can actually get this heat tape from Reptile Basics, and this plugs into your thermostat. And what I found is it's, it's better to do all three sides for the heat tape and then control it with a the thermostat from all three sides. You get a lot better temperature control versus, you know, originally I had some in the back and it wasn't really heating all the way around. I had really cold spots and then a hot spot in the back. And then I put the two sides and it works really well. I'd say the front maybe is a little bit cooler. But if you kind of scroll down, uh, look at the bottom here. So essentially what I do is, is I use this fan for circulation. 
And originally I actually put two fans in here and the motors on these fans get a little bit too hot, especially if I'm trying to heat this to 90 and it gets like in the mid 80s down here in the basement. Sometimes in the summer, in the heat of the summer, sometimes it gets almost, you know, a little bit over 80. And the problem is if I have two of those fans, then the, the motor on the fan actually heats up the inside over 90. I was getting a high temperature alarm from this. And essentially what I do is I, I have these little remote temperature probes in here. I have one on the top, one on the bottom. I got hooked up to a thermostat and an alarm. So if, if either one of these go above 90 degrees or you can set it to a certain temperature, I pretty much set them at 90 and then I have these you know, the alarms set at like 92 or 94. And if, you know, I, I was actually having problems the first year. I figured out it was my, I actually had two fans, which one, they were putting off too much heat because of the motor. And I finally just went down to one fan and it was fine. And then you need some kind of a thermostat. I actually took my thermostat out because I set up my uh, my quarantine area because <laughs> I bought a snake and I used the thermostat from here. And then you can use any kind of a thermostat like a Herbstat or a VE100, VE300 or any kind of a thermostat. And then what you want to do is you want to take the thermostat probe and you want to put it directly on one of these heat tapes. And here's kind of a trick if you're actually thinking about doing this with different types of heat tape like this. So for example, I plug all my heat tapes into a power strip like this, and then I plug the power strip into my heat controller, and then the, the heat controller turns this on and off, and then the temperature probe, essentially what you wanna do is you wanna plug it in first before you actually, you know, when you're first setting it up, and then when you first plug it in, you wanna feel which one gets hottest the fastest or you can take a temperature gun and take the temperature so so essentially these want this these heat strips on the side they heat up a lot faster than the other ones so really you want to regulate the hottest one with the probe so none of them go above the set temperature and you, normally for ball python eggs you set them at 90 degrees so I taped the probe directly to this and I actually put the probe right in the middle once and kind of hang it down here the problem is is if you have the, the probe kind of hanging in the middle here, this gets super, super hot until the probe gets 90 degrees. And I found when I was trying to put the probe in the middle and then put egg boxes on the sides over here, that the sides of the egg boxes would get almost 100 degrees on the side before the probe actually turned the heat, heat tape off. So what you really want to do is you want to put the heat tape right against uh, the probe, tape the probe right to it, so the heat tape never goes above 90 and you never have those temperature swings that'll actually affect your eggs. So this is my temperature alarm. I just put it right on the side. It's a magnetic thing and I actually take the batteries out during the off season and then I have uh, an upper temperature and a lower temperature and then the room temperature. It usually stays about in the 50s or 60s down here. So that's really good. You really want a differential between the, the room, a really cold room temperature and the 90 degree incubator because the, the bigger the differential it seems, the more you can control it. If, if you're trying to you know get to 80 or 90 degrees and the room temperature is 90 degrees is sometimes it's really hard to actually keep that 90 degrees especially if you have the fan in there putting off some heat so essentially what you want to do is a little bit cooler of a room temperature I actually had this in my snake room at 80 degrees and I think the fan temperature uh, the fan was actually increasing the temperature in here just a little bit too much and I actually had to move the whole incubator out into this colder room to actually get the temperature controlled but let me tell you this is fantastic another thing if you're actually thinking about setting one up normally the ball pythons don't all lay eggs at the same time so as I start filling it up and it gets completely full well, some of my eggs uh, are start hatching at the same time I'm, I'm putting new eggs in so it's always this you know some I'm taking out and some I'm putting in so if, if you're kind of thinking about the logistics of your breeding operation you don't necessarily have to have all eggs incubator space for all the eggs that you're producing because uh, I'd say in most cases they don't all lay eggs at the same time and there's a lag of at least two or three months between the first eggs and the last eggs. 
All right, so there you have it. That is the conversion of a refrigerator into a snake egg incubator. And I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of drone footage. I actually just bought a drone. I've been practicing quite a bit, flying my drone around. I actually brought it down to Pueblo, Colorado for the Christmas holiday. And let me tell you, there's some amazing scenery down in Pueblo like you've never seen. Probably never see any kind of landscape like this in the entire world. It is pretty amazing stuff. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.
So let's try something else. See if I can thread the needle right between those boats. No, 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 no. <laughs> About just a slightly over the water. Dude, what are you thinking? <laughs> okay, I'll make sure there's no one coming across, I guess. Let's see if I can get the camera and the focus. Around the angle. <laughs> All work. right, we're recording. It's recording. Do you need to go up any? Looks like you're gonna hit that thing. Oh, 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 oh shoot. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> that is threading the needle. <laughs>